Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. Today I have a few updates on the Micah Miller case. I know he's controversial, but uh, the, Ro the Robbie Harvey has been covering this Micah case. Claims to basically what the FBI knows, he knows next. And then we know. The Robbie Harvey did make a really good point in his video, and I just want to reiterate it here. He's basically saying all this information has come out now of JP uh, writing checks, using church funds to write checks uh, to pay informants, to basically dig up dirt so that JP can put together a defamation lawsuit. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not supposed to do that. That's super... Yeah, super illegal. There's several characters involved in this story. Can you imagine JP and Micah being the only ones? Absolutely not. I've heard several names being passed around, but when we're talking about the checks in themselves, there's a woman named Trisha Ross. Uh, I believe she had a criminal history as well, but she is currently being investigated because we want to know, did you also know that the church funds were being used in this way by JP? And if so, how involved were you and how much did you know? So I know she is currently being investigated for that. Note, note. Back to the Robbie Harvey's point, he's saying that all of this information has been made public. People are still going to church at the Solid Rock. He's not even blaming JP fully anymore. We know he's a monster. Whether or not he pulled the trigger, I believe that he would have pushed her to do what she allegedly did. But the people themselves who are attending church and filling up these pews are now just becoming as responsible as JP and the informants and everybody who are keeping these secrets because they continue to tithe, they continue to give their offering each week. I believe you have to be extremely ignorant at this point to not know where your tithe is going. Now it wasn't just to dig up dirt on him, but he was also sending text messages to potential witnesses, basically blackmailing them or divulging really, really, really sensitive topics uh, that only a few or a handful of people would know. So allegedly there's a witness who received two text messages very similar in nature a lot of the details have been blurred just to protect this woman's dignity a little bit and not have it plastered all over for the internet to see which I really respect um, but different numbers one kind of came from it's got to be a fake number or people speculate maybe a burner phone and then the other message you can see it even says JP at the top so one is coming from JP's number the other one is coming from an unknown possible burner phone now now, during Sunday worship, protesters were over at the Solid Rock Church once again chanting for justice for Micah. So JP goes over, right? And it's a hot day, but he decides to turn on the sprinklers. I don't think the protesters are too mad about that, to be honest. But another church member ends up walking over, taking the sprinkler and spraying at least six of the protesters directly for a couple of seconds, soaking them. I believe there's at least five uh, people who want to press charges for assault against this church member now, which I don't blame them whatsoever. I would too. No people, no church. He's spraying us with the hose. Look at this. No people, no church. No people, no church. No people, no church. He just sprayed them all in the face with the hose. No people, no church. No people, no church. Justice for Micah. We'll be out here till you're in handcuffs, buddy. We'll be out here till you're in handcuffs. We'll be out here till you're in handcuffs. That's the bottom line. Justice for Micah! Justice for Micah! Blood is on 
Micah's blood is on your hands. Micah's blood is on your hands. So during all this, JP walks away. Now he's caught on camera reaching in his back pocket, pulls out what looks like a phone, realizes that it's the wrong one, puts it back in his pocket, goes in the other pocket, and pulls out the right phone. Micah's blood is on your hands. It's the first time since the death of his wife two months ago that John Paul Miller has addressed protesters directly. I don't know how much the investigators have dug into uh, JP's call history and text history if they knew about a second phone because if they did, they sure gonna know. I truly believe this case is so much bigger than what we initially thought it would be. Yes, it was a tragic story, but it just didn't make sense from the beginning. Micah got dressed for work. She went to go buy a, a, a weapon at a, a pawn shop, allegedly drives herself to the state park, calls 911 and says, hey, I'm about to want to live myself and then she's found in water by a tree with not one but two spent shell casings one live casing one round found in a tree one round found in her head one and a half fired a test shot because she was trained on how to use a uh, weapon safely not only were these shell casings found but when I first read that the shell casings were found 40 meters from Micah's body because I measure in feet honestly that was very hard for me to picture but when I converted it a hundred and thirty one point something feet away from her body. There was no current in the river that day to drag her body away from it. She wouldn't be able to walk away from the shell casings with a wound such as the one that she had. And I also feel like we're finally seeing JP lose it a little bit. I saw, I don't know if it was on TikTok or YouTube, but if I can find it or screenshot it or something, JP was just recently found on it. You know, if you make a dating profile, you have to add a profile picture. Okay, okay so our past apparently is lonely. I don't know if Susie's doing it for it. I guess I, I think he had sent her flowers uh, Susie recently but now is found on a dating app. Not only does he just look a little, um, JP just looks a little a little strung out to be honest with you. The kicker of this is while he's trying to pick up woman on his new dating profile, what's around his neck? Micah's ashes. There's one more thing I want to cover in today's video, and that is a 911 call from Sierra Francis. Now, back in November of 2022, um, Micah and JP ended up having an argument. I I'm not even sure, I I'm not sure of a lot of things this man does, but I'm not sure why he would even ask if he would get this upset about it. But for some reason, probably because now we know that he has maybe some fantasies going on about, uh, uh, he <laughs> there's text messages of him asking about women's actual experiences. I think he has a lot going on in there that he's not, he, he's kind of suppressing a little bit. He goes on to ask Micah allegedly if he, she was to kiss any woman, who would it be? And she answered Charlotte. She kind of reminds me of the Chris Watts story where Shanann had her friend Nicole uh, who kind of cracked the case wide open. But I believe Charlotte is going to be a little bit of a heroine at the end of the story. So when Micah answers, the question that he asked her, I guess he got so mad at her that they ended up having a big argument and Micah leaves to go stay with Sierra for a couple of days. Which infuriates him even further because how dare you, a woman of God who's supposed to be uh, attentive to her husband, no matter what, even if it's, if it's apparently, uh, you know, A-B-U-S-I, if, uh, how, Micah, how dare you? How dare you embarrass a pastor like that in front of his entire con congregation? How dare you not deal with his BS? How dare you? That was probably what was going on in his head. So he, it infuriated him. And this is the text message that he sent. To Sierra, saying, I'm armed and ready. And I think the girls believed him. So here is Sierra's 911 phone call. November 17th, 2022. Zero hours, 24 minutes, 57 seconds. Hi, I was calling. My name is Sierra Francis. I spoke to an officer earlier today, um, and I didn't know, I guess, how to get back in touch with him and see if they could drive by and make sure there's not anybody outside. Okay. 
Where is your address at, Sudi? Yes, ma'am. What did you say was going on? Daphne. Um, I had called earlier and filed a police report with my sister about her spouse. He's saying he's going to come over and that he was threatening that he had a weapon with him. Yes, ma'am. Um, he said that he would be here at 1255. Um, GPS shows that he supposedly hasn't left um, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, but he just texted her and said, you, be you better drive down the road now um, or I'm coming and it's going to be hell to pay, like acting like he's outside. So we just want to verify that he's not. Okay. Yes, ma'am, that's my call back. 618-2632. Okay. And you just want um, an officer to come out and check the roads? Yeah, just make sure that he's not parked down at the street like he's acting like he is. Do you know what kind of car he would be in? Um, he has a few, but probably a, is it a red um, Dodge truck? He has a uh, red Dodge Ram. Or is Burgundy? Burgundy. Oh, call it. The Challenger? Is that what it is? Oh, never mind. That should be the, the vehicle if he is out there. The Burgundy Dodge truck? Yes, ma'am. Bear with me just for a second, so I'm just getting this information put in here, okay? No problem. We just want to, we just want to verify. You said he's... Um, you said he's texting her, threatening that he's going to kill himself. Yeah, he said my blood is going to be on your hands. But prior to that, he was threatening to come in here, and he said, call the cops, I don't care, I'm, I'm um, armed and ready. Okay. Which he is. He just purchased about six firearms in the past couple of days. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm, I can, I'm going to send you a link um, to your phone. If you wouldn't mind sending me uh, pictures of these text messages just so we have them and our officers can take a look at them. Okay. Just give me a second and I'll get that sent to you. Are and you, you said, me? I'm sending this, um, it's a link, and there'll be a couple things that they're going to ask you uh, once, once you get the link, and then you should be able to send us a couple pictures, okay? Okay, do you want my sister to fill it out or, like, as the spouse? Um, it doesn't matter who. Or do we both need to do it? Um, it's not. It's not like a paperwork or anything. It's just gonna ask mm -hmm. you like the location. Like, um, it's gonna ask you to verify your location. Um, and then you can just send those pictures, and it'll come straight to me. But the officers will also be able to see those pictures. Okay. Just let me know when you get that link, sweetie. Okay. How long has your sister been with you, sweetie? She just got here at 7.30, and she was supposed to stay until Tuesday. Um, she was supposed to meet him for a hot air balloon something in Asheville this, this weekend, and it was supposed to be whatever, but now he's changing the lot from the house and all kinds of stuff, so he's going to throw all her stuff in the yard. And then since she said she wasn't coming home, he said that he was going to come here, and he didn't care if he called the cops. He was going to be ready. Okay. And I did get the lead, so if you want me to start filling out while we're on the phone. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and do that, just uh, – I think it just asked for your location, and then you should be able to – Either take pictures of those, um, of like the text messages, or uh, you, sh you might be able to like screenshot them and upload them straight from your um, your phone that you're on now. Okay, I'm trying to just upload them. Yep. I don't know if it's going to let me. It wants me to take pictures of them, but I, I mean, I can't take pictures of my text. Um, is it is it coming to your phone or is she texting your phone or is she texting your sister's phone? Both phones. He was texting me because she didn't answer. Okay. Um, but I can take pictures of her phone. That's um, fine. that's fine. You can do that. That's whatever 
whichever pictures you can send to me is helpful to the officer so they can see what he's been sending. It, it doesn't have to be all of them because obviously if an officer comes out there, um, you can talk to him and show them in person. But, like, it's also good that it just have them, um, like, in in our records that they they got sent. What did she say? She's showing me the messages that I can send you. He texted her at 1224 and said, drive down the street or it's going to be hell. And then... This one says, why am I like that? I, would do, I wouldn't do anything like that. My blood is on you and my kids will know. Charles, going to check it. That's going to be all the pictures for me. Um, it's not letting me send the photos. Okay. What is what is your sister's phone number? Like the messages. Okay. I'm gonna send it to her and see if she gets it. It says one picture of one for you on my end now. I do. I did just get. Yeah. No colors. He's not at the location that he was last at at 10 o'clock. We just have somebody go back and check. But his location on his phone says he's there. Yeah, but his location on his phone says that he's still there, and it has been saying that all day. Um, but gonna, our friend just checked. I'm going to guess he probably turned off his location um, just as, like, a precaution so you guys can't track him. Um, what is his name? John um, Dash Paul. That's his, like, first name. Mm-hmm. And no middle name, last name Miller. And what is his address? Cold Water Circle. Cold Water Circle. Is that two Little words or is that one Island. word? Cold Water is one word and then circle. I did just get the picture. It's the one picture. Um, he sent me. Uh, That's the one I just put her to go back to the other one. Right down the street or something else. Can you give me his phone number? What is his phone number? All right. Okay. Is he, has he sent any more threatening text messages to you, sweetie? Or to your sister? You can open the last one. The last one he said um, was my blood. The, the last threatening type one is that my blood is on you at 1227. Okay, I got I another one. So that she can have the pictures that he sent me or the messages. What am I no, go, go to the messages she sent me with the link and take a picture of my phone because it won't let me send screenshots. It has to be photos. What's your sister's name, Booty? Micah um, Miller, M-I-C-A, Miller. And what um, what is your phone number, Booty, Micah? Yes. Give me just a second. I'm just. Hey, Michael, what county do you live in? Horry County. Okay, thank you. Here, if I get quiet, um, I'm just talking to our officers. Okay, if you if he sends any more text messages, just let me know. Okay. Did I stop sending my, like, sharing my location with him? I mean, if you want to, it might cause more problems, but you haven't left the house that you're in. So I don't think, I don't know that it would be a problem, but if he stops sharing his location. What does he look like, Micah? <clears throat> He's six to... He's Caucasian, 
Brown hair, brown eyes. He just stopped sharing his location with me. So you said, <coughs> excuse me, you said he's a white male, 6'2", brown hair, brown eyes. That's correct. What kind of build does he have? Uh, he's 200 pounds, slim. Okay. All right. <coughs> My husband is the exact same, but he's in bed, just so you know. <laughs> I don't want the cops coming here, and then he, if he walks outside, they can at him, but he's in bed, so it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I've got that noted in here that he's asleep with your son. Is your son the okay. only child in the house? He is. I made sure before they went to bed they were in the same bed, so in case anything happened. What did you say um, you made sure what before they went to bed? I just made sure that both of them were in the same room in case anything does happen. That way we know exactly where everybody is at. Okay. Where are you guys at in the house? If you're looking at the house, we're on the far right end. Okay. Are you in a bedroom? We are. And then the far left side of the house is the, be the other bedroom where the other people are. What is um, John Paul's date of birth, sweetie? May 20th, 1979. He's 43. You said 1979? Yes. That's dumb. I'm doing this. I'm just trying to fix it. And you're... Um, here, your husband and son, they're on the opposite side of the house? Yes, ma'am. If you're looking at the house, they're far left. Okay. It's just a double wide trailer. And um, what's, your, what's your husband's name? Matthew Brown. Is that B R I M N? Uh, first name Matthew, last name Brown. Brown. B R O W N. All right. Y'all don't hear anything outside, and you haven't seen any lights um, or anything, have you? I haven't seen lights, but we have. A lot of free-range chickens and ducks, so if it's noise out there, it's kind of hard to tell what it might be. And then my dog just had nine puppies, and they're all inside, and so it's kind of loud either way. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Sorry. Sure. No, it's okay. I just wanted to make sure you didn't hear any kind of... Um... Yeah, I haven't heard anything abnormal, I guess that's what I should say. Any kind of car or anything, like, loud or anything like that outside, but... No, not that we could see, but he was texting her to, like, drive down the road. So that's why we were like, okay, parked outside because my driveway's so long, and he probably is trying not to get hit with trespassing. Okay, I've got a couple officers on the way out there, sweetie. They're just, um, looking here. They shouldn't be too far. Uh, they were just coming from town. I believe they were both at the sheriff's office, but mm -hmm. I promise mm -hmm. they're coming to you. Okay. And he hasn't texted anything else since? No. And has, you said he try, he's tried to call you? One time. Yeah, he, he tried calling, and then I didn't answer, so he didn't call after that. And I have a friend on the way to my house to see if he's at the house. Okay. Because he, he wasn't at the church, which she lives right by the church. And she's headed to our house, which is like seven minutes away from the church. Okay. Well, you know what kind, of car, bluffing. what kind of car your friend is in? We've got... um. The county that you live in on the phone, trying to see if he. She drives a 
silver, like a kind of a charcoal uh, palisade. Okay. She could be driving her husband's car, though, which is a white, I see cop light. Don't open the window. Hold on. Sorry. I'm not, I'm not trying to stop it. It's just a habit. If somebody's pulling into your driveway and you open your window, they'll see exactly where you are. Any more cops. I want them to see where you're safe. I know. Well, so the only room with lights on, so it's kind of obvious where we are. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Okay, sweetie, if y'all hear anything, I've got my officers out there on Deer Ridge. They're going to take a look around. Do y'all want them to come up, up to the house and talk to you? Uh, they're in our driveway. Okay. If y'all want to go out there and talk to them, um, please go ahead and give them whatever information you have, okay? Okay. Um, are you going to get off the phone with us now? Um, I mean, I can stay on it if you want me to, but I've got two officers out there. Um, no, that's fine. They're on my porch. I can let you go and talk to them. All right. Go ahead, sweetie. Thank you. No problem. There is so much information coming out that continues to come out, so I will continue to update you as we go on. So please go ahead and subscribe if you don't want to miss it, and I'll see you in my next one.